uh, different videos that are available in the internet and uh, going through that I thought of making a fresh video on ocular embryology now ocular embryology assumes that the student of the subject do already have the concept of general embryology so in the subject of general embryology we got ourselves familiar with neural tube if anybody is not that familiar with the concept of a neural tube I'll be requesting those to go through the other videos which offer you the concept of the neural tube in the present video we're going to show you how a part of the neural tube develops to the optic cup for those people who are first introducing or getting introduced to the idea of the neural tube I am presenting the diagram out here this diagram is the diagram of a neural tube neural tube is formed by the process called neurulation okay so uh, I'm not going to the details of the neurulation process assuming that you are already familiar with it what I'm now showing you on the side out in this side is the section of this neural tube so in the section of this neural tube what I see the hollow tube is present this internal aspect is the hollow area of the neural tube and this hollow area of the neural tube is bound by the wall of the neural tube so the entire neural tube is a hollow cylindrical structure and on the top of the hollow cylindrical structure what we see here is the violet area this belongs to the neural crest area and even on the top of the neural crest what we see is a flattened sheet of cells this flattened sheet of cells are known as ectoderm what we are seeing from the outside is only the ectoderm in order to have this concept much better we can take the example of a pen or a pencil can we see the ripple of the pen from its outside if the pen body is not a transparent one obviously not so what you need to do to find out whether the ripple is present inside the pen or not we can break the ripple that means we can we can make the pen be halved into sections and if we observe each such sections found what we can see is a cross section and in that cross section we can see the riffle out there the hollow space that is inside the riffle as well as outside the riffle bound by the external body of the pen similarly what we found out here is the hollow area and the hollow area is bound by the the wall of this tube and this entire tube on the top is having the neural crest in the violet color in the diagram and on the top of the neural crest we are having this flattened sheet of ectoderm from this concept we now move further to the development of the optic cup here I would like to emphasize that the two structures that are important for the optic cup development are only this ectoderm and this neural tube few details are shown of the neural tube out here which is the sulcus limitans that is the depressions present on either side of the internal aspect of the wall of the neural tube that is the additional details and I am now naming here the cells that are forming the wall of this neural tube these cells are known as the neuroepithelial cells fine so the two structures in the further development are number one the surface ectoderm and number two the neural tube both these structures though have been shown previously I'm showing you once more this is the neural tube and this is the ectoderm though written here as ectoderm more appropriately it would be termed as surface ectoderm okay so now we take a snapshot of this entire process I'll be explaining each and every diagram but in a moment okay now in this diagram what we see that there was a neural plate which has finally developed into the optic vesicle now from this optic vesicle optic couple develop in a step-by-step -step manner we will be analyzing each of these diagrams to find out exactly how the development of optic cup takes place so shown here are the prosencephalin okay we now move to the next one if you observe the previous one the first diagram has been shown here and that diagram has been compared with the diagram that 
we had been learning for the first few minutes. Of this section, if I draw that section on this side, what would I see is the neural plate. So what actually is the neural plate? If you see this sheet of cells, the cells which are located more close to the excess of the cylinder, to the excess of the cylinder, the cells that are present that forms what we now say as the neural plate. So what neural plate is? Nothing more than a sheet of cells of the surface ectoderm that is present along the excess of the embryo. So this neural plate is present along the excess of the embryo. Beyond the excess, what lies is the ectoderm itself. You can see the ectoderm, though leveled on one side, but it's present on both the sides. Now, what happens to this neural plate? We shall examine it in the next diagram. So, this neural plate has undergone a level this shape to which the neural plate transforms itself. See, the previous diagram was this one, the neural plate has transformed itself and in this transformation what you find are certain depressions you see one depression on this side and that on the other side these depressions are known as optic sulcus what happens to this optic sulcus in the next stage this was the diagram previously this diagram was showing the optic sulcus. Now, this optic sulcus area of the neural plate projects farther. It projects farther. These are the projections. Observe it very closely. These are the projections of the optic sulcus. And meanwhile, these two ends has fused together. This is the fusion that is showing out here has fused together to form this entire tube called the neural tube. What happens to this ectoderm on both the sides? This ectoderm now overlies the neural tube. So this is the formation that we must understand first. On the top is the surface ectoderm that was diagrammatically explained before that was diagrammatically explained before the surface ectoderm and on the uh, I mean below the surface ectoderm we are having the neural tube and on the sides of the neural tube the optic sulcus is gradually transforming itself as the optic ves vesicle we now see this transition see this is the optic vesicle each of this optic vesicle has an outer wall. This is the outer wall as well as an inner wall. See this inner walls. What happens in this transition is that the inner wall has fused. This area represents the fusion of the inner wall. These two areas on both the sides represents the fusion of the inner wall. Leaving the outer peripheral area as it is. So the outer peripheral area appears much more swollen. This outer peripheral area forms the optic vesicle and this narrow area that is still maintaining the continuation of this ocular structure to the neural tube, this continuation maintaining structure is the optic stalk. If you observe on the other side, you can also see the optic stalk out here. So the optic stalk maintains the continuation of the optic vesicle to the neural tube in the diencephalon area of the neural tube. The idea of how the optic vesicle gets formed and how is the optic stalk connecting the optic vesicle to the neural tube, we now finally move on to the formation of the optic cup. Basically in this diagram what you see the optic vesicle area has 
invaginated its outer wall. So on invaginations, what do you see is a cup-like structure, exactly. That same cup-like structure, the one cup that you use every morning for having your cup of tea, that same cup-like structure is also visible in the optic vesicle. And once that optic vesicle transforms itself into the cup-like structure, the term of this area now changes from optic vesicle to optic cup. The optic cup is a hollow cup. This hollow is continued with the hollow of the optic stalk. We have seen previously how optic stalk develops. Now this entire hollow of both the optic cup as well as the optic stalk remains in continuation to the hollow of the neural tube. This kind of presentation is also available on the other side. On the other side, one thing that is missing is the prolongation of the surface ectoderm. As I was already saying earlier, on the top of this entire neural tube is the surface ectoderm. Now the surface ectoderm is also present on the sides. On the sides, the part of the surface ectoderm that is present will give rise to other ocular structures as is evident in this diagram. On this side, the same presentation though, in pres though is present in reality but is not shown in the diagram for the sake of the convenience of students understanding. So we are now having the optic cup that is attached to the neural tube with the help of the optic stalk. On the other side what we see is an original diagram. The diagrams that we used till now is for the betterment of our understanding of the entire process of development of the optic cup. Now once the optic cup is developed, if we try to make a histological section of this area, this appearance is what we can see. What we see is this white area, see this white area is an absolutely hollow structure and this hollow structure is bounded on all the sides by the tissues. This area is the optic cup area. So the optic cup area is having an inner wall as well as the outer wall. See this is the outer wall on one side and on the other side the outer wall is shown here. You have to think of this three dimensionally. What is being showing on the diagram is a two dimensional presentation. So uh, you can take a cylindrical balloon and can cause a depression at one end of that balloon. So what you find that the hollow of the cylindrical balloon is still present after you depress one end of that cylindrical balloon. So in the end where you are trying to depress it, there you will find a development of two layered structure. That two layered structure is the cup and that cup is attached to the remaining hollow with this stalk. These two are the wall of the optic stalk. As you can read out here also, this is the wall of the optic stalk and this area is the cavity of the optic stalk. And this cavity of the optic stalk is continuous with the cavity of the forebrain. And on the lower side also, you can see this optic stalk present. Again, these two things are the same things, the same wall of that same single optic stalk and the space in between the inner wall and the outer wall has been labeled out here as the intra-retinal space. So by this we can easily understand that these two layers of the optic cup would develop in future the retina, exactly the retina. So with this understanding we are now moving on to this diagram. This diagram is the intact section of the entire neural tube. Now one thing is there that you have to appreciate. We were discussing only of this area but the development is not restricted in this area. The development is simultaneously taking place throughout the simultaneously taking place throughout the entire length of the neural tube. So what are the developments? If we go through it in a very short way, the developments at the extreme front are the two cerebral hemispheres, 
both the cerebral hemispheres are hollow and both the cerebral hemispheres are in continuation with the help of the third ventricle and if you continue further backwards what you find is this third ventricle okay they uh, the continuation or the junction between these three ventricles one is the uh, the third ventricle another are the two lateral ventricles this uh, connection is having a name that is called the foramen okay and from that the third ventricle continues from the walls of the third ventricle so third ventricle basically represents the diencephalon area so from the walls of the third ventricle what you can see are these outgrowths these outgrowths are entirely ocular structures this is what we have learned so far in this video at the central what you find is the what you find is the infundibular recess this is the area from where in future the pituitary gland will hang from okay so this is the area of the future pituitary gland this area would develop further to the different ocular structures let us have a look on the other part of the developments of this neural tube um, if we move further backward what we can see is this midbrain area in the midbrain area the hollow area structure is known as the cerebral aqueduct as it is written here another name for cerebral aqueduct is aqueduct of sylvius so this aqueduct of sylvius is continuous with the cavity of the fourth ventricle so this is the fourth ventricle and the cavity of the fourth ventricle is finally being narrowed down as the cavity of the central canal of the spinal cord okay so you see that this entire central nervous system is basically a hollow tube whatever the developments that we see of this central nervous system are basically the developments of the wall of this hollow tube so the wall of the neural tube develops into different parts and structures of the central nervous systems one part of the neural tube known as the diencephalon the wall of the diencephalon area of the neural tube that area of the uh, neural tube develops this optic vesicles which finally develops into optic cup and from the optic cup the retina is going to be developed outside the optic cup there are other structures which will be developing other layers of the adult eye okay so regarding that development might be we will be discussing it in some other videos this is beyond the scope of the present videos so thanks for watching the video you might be having different suggestions you might be having you know, some feedbacks to report to me this is the number that i provide to you please do note this number and do not forget to mention all your queries in the comment section of this video so that i can take individual queries and i can plan the future videos which will be uh, very much helpful to all of you to understand the concept of ocular embryology thanks for watching once again i complete this with this last diagram which actually is the photo micrograph what you see the optic cup once more as i am showing you this is the optic cup this obviously is the inner wall of the optic cup and the outside it is the uh, outer wall of the optic cup uh, so with this i bid you bye for this video see you again in the next video thank you thanks for watching